Hello everyone, today we're going to be taking a look at refactoring our application. Previously, we had four different files here, the post form, the show page, the edit page, and the index page that we're all running through our Rails API with this React app that are doing their own fetches. Now, a fetch is going to be like a get request, a post request, a delete request, or, you know, a patch request, whatever. And in some cases, what we're actually doing is we are first firing a git request then we're doing like the edit or something to that effect where we have like a git request in our like new post form for example or sorry our edit post form for example and we have a git request in like our post details right because in our post show page we have to get the post before we can show it and then in our uh, post edit form right here, we also have to get the post before we can actually edit it. So we have to get it, we have to set it, and then we can do the edit. So in both those cases, we're, we're getting it first. So that means we have that code duplicated. Similarly, in like our details page, we have this delete button. And then in our index page, we also have this delete logic. So it'd be nice if we could just move all of this into one service and then just call the delete service instead of having that, you know, write this delete request every single time. So although it's only like three lines of code, uh, it's still a little bit too much for me to have to do because I'm very lazy. So let's go ahead and let's do this. We'll start by creating a new issue. I'm gonna say, let's uh, refactor to use service. Uh, I don't know, service for posts, I guess. Not the best issue, but whatever. Uh, I don't want to have to write a delete request every time I gotta delete something. And then we'll end it with an SMH my head, uh, just because we're like 12 years old. Okay, so we can do that. Click create branch, click create branch, click the copy button, move this over into the top right and forget about it. And then down here in our terminal, we will just go ahead and do whatever this is. We'll right click, there we go. And now if I come over to my other terminal and hit control L, it'll also switch over to that branch. So that's pretty cool. And again, I'm splitting my Windows terminal by using, I think it's uh, Alt, Shift, and the plus button. And then Alt, Shift, minus will split it so it's on the bottom instead. But okay, let's go ahead and let's take a look at how we want to do this. So in our application here, we currently have these four different things. We want to make a service. So let's start by right-clicking on our SRC. We'll say a new folder. Call this services. Services. Now, I've also seen this done with like a uh, API folder, and then you have like a post API or whatever. Ultimately up to you doesn't really matter. Uh, there might be a way that companies prefer to do it, but the secret sauce that no one seems to tell you is you can just ask the company what they prefer during hiring if you're doing like an interview and you're like, yeah, I want to make a thing for the service. Do you prefer API or service or whatever? And then they'll just tell you, yeah, here we just, you know, let's just do it this way. You're not going to look any less professional than the other guy. You might even look more professional than the guy who just assumes you should use a service file. Just as an aside, always drives me nuts when people put like the, so much emphasis on stuff like this. I'm going to go ahead and call this the post service .js, hit enter. And then we, we now have that. So in our post service, let's go ahead and let's start grabbing some of this stuff. So let's come into our post list. In our post list, we have the, uh, the get request. So let's worry about the get request first. And let's try to just like fetch a post by uh, an ID, right? Or I guess this one's going to be uh, fetching all of the posts uh, as opposed to just one. So in here we have this const response equals await fetch API URL. So that seems simple enough. So let's come into our post service and let's try and do something similar. So let's start by importing import, if I can type, our API URL from, and then this is coming from dot dot slash constants, right? We can go ahead and close that. So let's go ahead and let's do a async function and let's do a f uh, fetch all posts. And then we can just do it like this. And then we want to do a const response is equal to an await for fetch. Uh, and this can just be API URL, I think, because it should have posts automatically on it. It's been a couple days since I've touched this code, so forgive me. Uh, and then after we do that, we can then say, all right, let's do if, uh, let's see now, not response okay, then we want to throw a new error or console log something, whatever you want to do to handle this. I'll just leave it as the error for now. And then we'll just return response.json, something like that. So that gives us this fetch all posts, except uh, we also need to, at the bottom, say we want to export this. So let's just do an export for fetch all posts for now. There's a couple other ways we could do this, but I think this one makes the most sense. Let's come over here. Instead of importing the API URL now, what I want to do is say, we don't need this API URL, but we do need fetch all posts. And this should be coming from 
Uh, I think it's dot dot slash dot dot slash services slash post service like that. Uh, so now we have this fetch all post. We'll deal with this React later. Uh, so for this fetch all post in our use effect now, we can do something a little bit simpler than what we have. So let's get rid of this and let's just get rid of all of this. I think it's probably the best way to do it, right? We can keep the try catch, uh, catch for an exception like that. Uh, and we can also set loading to be false if we want to. Uh, but up here we can do const data equals await fetch posts or fetch all posts. We can then set posts using this data right here. And then we can set loading to be false, just like that. So it's essentially the same uh, functionality here, except we're now just doing it once. And now we can use this fetch all post wherever we need to. It looks a little bit cleaner than what we had previously, right? This is what it used to look like. Our file was 69 nice lines long, and now it's 63 lines long. So it's a little bit cleaner. You'll notice that our delete down here is also broken now. So let's go ahead and let's just do the delete as well. Uh, so let's come into our post service and let's let's just write this delete. The nice thing about doing this is in a lot of ways, you really don't need to think while you're doing it uh, because you kind of already have the logic over here. So if you want to just grab whatever logic you have over here, you can pretty much do that. In this case, I'm just going to go ahead and rewrite it. So let's start with an async function. Uh, we will call this, uh, let's just do delete posts and then we'll pass in the ID. And then we can say uh, const response equals await for fetch API URL slash ID with a method of delete. We can then check if it's okay, or sorry, if it's not okay. And then we can return the response.json. Now, I'm going to give you a little bit of a forewarning here because I know someone's going to mention it. We are going to come back here and we're going to test this code using Jest. And when we go to test it, we're going to realize that this isn't handling all of the edge cases. So for now, just bear with me. This will be our delete. But there is a lot more stuff that can happen here that we should probably account for. Uh, and there's probably a better way to do this. But let's just leave it like this for now. We'll export it and we'll pretend like this is uh, just something that we missed and we'll, we'll just make an issue for it later. So let's export the delete post, come back into our post list up here. We can do delete post as another thing that we want to import. And then instead of doing this right here where we do this and then we check the response and then we do the try catch, etc. What we can do is we can get rid of everything in this try and we'll just do await delete post ID. And then we can do a set posts where we can either do like a post.filter where the post ID does not equal ID if we want to do it that way. We can also, if I just comment this out, we could also do something like set posts and then previous posts. And then we can arrow function a previous post.filter post. Uh, and then we can do this post.id does not equal ID, right? Uh, in this case, I think it's this one's probably fine. So let's go ahead and let's comment this out. Let's leave it like that and get rid of this line. Then for our error, we're just going to console.error our error here. And let's actually do something like failed to delete the post colon. And then we can do a comma like this. So that'll give us something that's a bit more readable. So that cleans up our code quite a bit. We're now down to like 55 lines, right? So let's come back into uh, our uh, post service and take a look at what we have. We have the get all and the delete. Let's go into our post details and refactor this one. And then we can do the other parts in a second video because this one's already getting a little bit long. So in the post details, we have the ability to delete a post and we have the ability to get a post, right? So let's start with the delete a post. Instead of doing this API URL, again, we're gonna import the uh, fetch post and the uh, delete post, delete post, just like keeping these alphabetical, don't know why, from our dot dot slash dot dot slash uh, services slash post service, right? Something like that. For our delete post, we again have a try here and we're all we're doing here is navigating to the root if it doesn't work. So let's get rid of this, let's get rid of this, or sorry, if it does work. And then instead, let's just await the post, pass in the post.id. And then if that works, we can then go ahead and navigate to wherever we want to go. If it doesn't work, we have our console.error here with a failed to delete the post colon comma error, something like that. And that should be good. Now we are getting an error here for our delete post and for our fetch post. Oh, you know why? Because this is called delete post for some reason. 
Uh, so let's go ahead and let's do import delete post as delete post service. Uh, alternatively, what you could do is you could just rename this to something else, uh, but either way will work. And for the fetch post, we're not actually using it yet because we don't have it yet. So let's go ahead and let's do this fetch post. So in here, what we're doing is we're doing an await, but we pass in the ID. So this is going to look similar to how we're doing the uh, the delete post. So we'll come up here uh, after the uh, index page. Let's do the show page. I'm just trying to like match this up to how a Rails, if I, if I come over to the post controller, to what a Rails scaffold looks like. It's got like the index forget all, and then it's got the show forget one. Uh, so I'm trying to do something similar. This is like your index forget all. This will be your get one. So we'll say fetch post. Uh, I mean, you could either do fetch post or fetch post by ID. I'm just going to do fetch post because I feel like it's self-explanatory. You know, const response equals an await fetch uh, API URL slash ID, which we're passing in. Then we can do a check if the response is not OK, throw an error, uh, and then we can return response.json. Again, a lot of this stuff when we start doing our just testing is going to need to be refactored to work a little bit better. For now, I think this is fine. So let's come back over to our posts here. We have, uh, sorry, not our post list. Let's come over to our post details. Although this one also has the same issue. So let's say as delete post service, and then we can copy this and we can change this one to an await delete post service. And that should get rid of that error. Let's come back over to the post details and use this fetch post. So instead of doing this, where we have this await, we need to first do the response await fetch post Dot ID and let's actually change this to be JSON. So we're awaiting the JSON from fetch post and then we're setting the post and then we can go ahead and get rid of that. And now we have something that's a little bit simpler here. And then after we do that, we can call the function uh, and that'll work just fine. So let's go ahead and let's give this a try. Unfortunately, we don't have any tests right now. So let's just go ahead and let's do a rails S and let's do a NPM run dev over here, just like that. Let me hit control, oops, control minus a couple times so you can see that NPM run dev. There we go. And now let's come over to this URL in our browser, which uh, is 127.0.0.1. Uh, and it's telling us SRC services post service does not provide an export named fetch post. So let's come into our post service down here. We need to do fetch uh, post like this except uh, this actually needs to be moved. So let's cut this and let's do it like this. So we have fetch all post, fetch post, and then we can save that, come over here and refresh. And that seems to be working. So it just grabbed all of the posts. The other thing we did was we changed the show page. So let's go to the show page. Uh, it's getting the testing just fine right here for round robin. And uh, we should be able to also delete. So let's scroll down here and let's delete this sunt S E U M. We can see here we're running into an error at delete post in our post service. Uh, we have something uh, that's not working. So instead of returning this response.json down here, what we actually want to do is uh, do a if response.status is equal to 204. And if you're not familiar, 204 is uh, no content status. So we're saying if there's no content, then return null. Else, uh, let me, t uh, okay, my formatter's messed up. Uh, else, we want to return the response.json. The reason we're doing this is, uh, let me get rid of this, because uh, if, well, actually, we don't need this else, right? We can just leave it like this. Uh, that's probably a cleaner way to do it. Uh, the reason we're doing this is because Rails will actually, if I come in here, it should say it'll return a 204 no content after it deletes something, because after you delete it, there is inherently no content there. So let's go ahead and let's try to delete this EA consequitor officia. So let's click on this, delete it. You'll see there's no error in the console here and down here in the terminal, it deletes it just fine. We no longer have that EA thing. So let's come in here, scroll down and that's gone as well. Now let's come into this corpus one and click delete on here just to make sure this one's working. Click delete and our corpus is also gone. So we've now implemented both of those features in our service here which means now what we have to do is handle the other cases. So what we have left next time, uh, we did the index, we did the show, and we did the destroy. So next time we have to do the create and we have to do the update. So our post and our patch are the two that we have left. Let's come in here to our terminal and let's just check real quick what we've done with the git status. You can see we've modified two files and we've added one new one. That makes sense. We added the service and then we changed both those files. So let's do a git add dot git commit and let's just do it like this. We'll say uh, implement or I don't know, refactored, refactored into services 
And then we'll just come in here and in the actual commit, we'll just say we did something like refactored, uh, refactored the show and index pages to use a service uh, instead of just replicating the uh, fetch requests everywhere. And then we can come down to the couple lines and say, next step is to do the edit and create actions, right? Then we can hit control O, enter, control X, and that's now been committed. Let's do a git push to push this up and come up here and we can refresh. Uh, we can refresh. Let's go over to code. And there we go. Now we can do a compare and pull request and we can say refactored into services. Uh, we did this and I'm actually going to do a checkbox here and I'll say refactor, refactored, uh, I don't know, index page, refactored show page, right? And then we'll just come over here, do an X in each of these. And now if we create this pull request, this should in theory create the two checkboxes. Looks pretty cool. Uh, but we're not going to do this PR yet. For now, we're just going to leave it like this. And what we can actually do is come in here and we can add two more where we say refactored uh, or refactor might be a cleaner way of doing this now that I'm looking at it. Refactor uh, edit page and refactor new page. So we can do that. There we go. We got two out of four of our tasks done here. So that's pretty cool. So that's going to do it for this video. Hopefully this was informative and helpful. And hopefully I will see you in the next one where we finish up what we did here.